What's up good people? Today we're looking at how to make an Aphex Twin sounding track using only Ableton Live default devices. I've reverse engineered the track four from the Richard D. James album. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you like music tut, breakdowns and composition stuff. Let's jump right in. First off, you gotta have a lot of these types of snare and cymbal rushes. What is a cymbal rush? Well, let's take this section over here and listen to the cymbal, the hi-hat. Cool, let's see what's going on here. I've taken a MIDI clip and set the grid to 1 32nd. So this distance over here is a 1 32nd value. And then I've duplicated it all the way through one in two entire beats of the song. So 5.2 to 5.4, a nice little cymbal rush. Once you've done that, select all the notes and use the B key on your keyboard or this pencil icon up here and you'll be able to draw in different um, velocities for the notes. And that just makes it sound better than the machine gun sound. Here's the machine gun sound. That's what we don't want. Here is a nice smooth fade. Sounds a little bit more creative, a little bit more fun. Sounds like the, it's being pulled back and then pushed forward. Do the same for your snares. This is a snare rush, typical Aphex Twin snare rush. And the exact same thing, you set it to about a 30 second or even less if you like, and uh, just use your velocity curve to draw an increase or a wave of velocity so it doesn't sound like a machine gun. The kit I've selected is a native Ableton 707 kit, the 707 core kit. So um, that's pretty much what they were using at the time in the 90s for electronic music, that type of stuff. For the bass line, you're definitely going to want a little bit of LFO pitch wobbliness. So the LFO here, you can see it's going to the four dif different oscillators, which means whichever oscillator I use, I'm going to be able to make it wobble like that. You don't want too much, just a little bit. Let's take it up. Too much. There we go. Tasteful amount. Without that, you get a very flat sound, and that's just not very Aphex Twin. So give it a, a little bit of wobble on the bass. In this track, I've got the strings and the polysynth playing the same thing. It's a super simple part. It has to be simple so that it can offset the manic energy of the rhythm section. So you've got this nice uh, combination of busy drums and really simple uh, synthesizers. Take a listen. Cool. And lastly, the monosynth just acts as a type of counter harmony to the strings and the polysynth. Really simple part, just like that. And short parts that repeat quite often, every four bars. And the whole track together sounds like this. What you'll notice is that the bass, the strings, the polysynth, the monosynth are all repeating quite often. Every four bars, the loop continues, but the snare takes twice as long as that. The snare is really holding together the variation in this tune so that you're not just hearing the same uh, loop again and again. It, it sounds much nicer when you've got a longer loop overlapping a short one. So that's a little basic walkthrough on how to create an Aphex Twin sounding track. If you want to download this project, check the link in the description where you can get the self-contained Ableton 11 file and uh, you shouldn't have any missing VSTs or samples or files when you open it, just click open and play. Shout out to Ben Jordan for his excellent video, the batshit software that Aphex Twin used. There'll be a link in the description for that. Thanks for joining today and we'll see you again at the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm John Bartman, catch you soon.